Ladies and gentlemen, now please welcome the 83rd governor of the great state of Georgia, Brian P. Kemp. Thank you all so much. Lieutenant Governor Jones, Speaker Burns, my fellow constitutional officers, members of the judiciary, my predecessors, Governor Deal, Governor and Ms. Perdue, Governor and Mrs. Barnes, First Lady Miller, members of our congressional delegation, thank you all for joining us today. My fellow Georgians, Four years ago, I stood before many of you and laid out a roadmap to, live, to deliver on big promises, to shake up the status quo, and to put hardworking Georgians first. Standing on that stage in 2019, swearing the oath of office on the Bible that Marty was holding with Jarrett, Lucy, and Amy Porter by our side, none of us could have imagined the immense challenges our state would face in the years to come. Together, we overcame a once-in-a-century global public health crisis. We stood with law enforcement to crack down on violent crime and keep our families and our communities safe. And we safeguarded the economic freedoms and success of Georgians leading our state to break record after record and set an example for the rest of the nation. We, we could not have anticipated the historic challenges and the tremendous headwinds that the Peach State would face throughout my first term in office. But thanks to the character of our people, and the determination of public servants and local heroes in every corner of our state, I believe now more than ever, Georgia's best days are ahead of us. I also know that over the last four years, my hair has gotten grayer, my face has more wrinkles, and as you know, my family and I have taken our fair share of arrows. But I cannot be more proud of how resilient Marty, Jarrett, and Amy Porter were during those times, just like our fellow Georgians were. <laughs> Marty told me I forgot Lucy. I was reading ahead. Sorry about that, Lucy. Our prayer warrior, Lucy, I apologize. <laughs> but I'll say this, my heart has never been more proud to be a Georgian. And just the old construction guy from Athens has never been more optimistic about the future of our state. And just like we did four years ago, in 2022, our family traveled the state and promised to address Georgia's challenges. And just like we did throughout my first term as your governor, my administration intends to deliver. While some here in Georgia and across the country wanted to talk about pie-in-the-sky proposals that sound good on TV, we stayed focused on what mattered to real people, real families, and real communities across our state. The deal that we offered voters was that your state government should care a lot more about safe streets, good schools, and good paying jobs than what the pundits are saying on the cable news. Instead of catering to the talk shows or what is popular on the cocktail circuit, this administration and the leadership in the General Assembly are going to put you and your families first. 
Over the next four years, we're going to be focused on growing Georgia, not growing government. That's why we will invest state dollars by putting them back in your pockets, not using them to build new bureaucracy. We will keep our foot on the gas by bringing good paying jobs and greater opportunity to every corner of the Peach State. We will ensure that our kids have the resources they need to overcome learning loss and find success in the classroom instead of teaching them what to think. And we will leverage state resources to support law enforcement, toughen penalties for criminals, crack down on human trafficking, and use every tool at our disposal to keep your family safe. Each and every one of the... Each and every one of the promises that we made on the campaign trail last year will make up our legislative package in 2023. And with the help of our partners in the General Assembly, we will keep our word once again. In addition to fulfilling my commitments to the voter of this state on the campaign trail, tomorrow morning my administration will release our budget recommendations for the amended 2023 and 2024 fiscal years. These proposals will build on the conservative budgeting that has been a hallmark of leadership in this state for over 20 years and continue to put Georgia on a stable path to greater prosperity, growth, and opportunity. They will also highlight how making tough decisions during tough times pays off in the long run if your leaders have the backbone to follow through. By working together over the last four years, this team, including some who are no longer with us, stood firm. We listened to the people of our state, not the Atlanta paper, the media, the pundits, or the so-called experts. We gave Georgians the opportunity to go back to work, to get their kids back in the classroom, and protect freedom to live their lives without fear of more government lockdowns, mandates, and overreach. And because we did that, Georgia came roaring back. Georgia has the most people ever working, the lowest unemployment rate in the history of our state. We have broken economic record after record and announced four of the largest job projects the history of our state, in the history of our state in just the last year and a half. That unprecedented success is because of the people of our state and because they were so resilient. Because hardworking Georgians had hope that the next day would be better. Families had faith that tomorrow would bring good news. My fellow Georgians, that resilience, that hope, that faith has secured a brighter future for our state, for our children, for our grandchildren, and for future generations. And for that, each and every one of you has my deepest thanks and the gratitude of all the elected leaders here with us today. Thank you all for being so resilient. The budgets my office will release tomorrow make historic investments in our schools, our safety, our citizens, and our future. These budgets cut taxes, return billions back to taxpayers, and fund our priorities. One of these many priorities is our state employees. Any business or organization is only good as its people. And I'm so proud of everything the public servants throughout our state have done and accomplished over the last few years. But the truth is high turnover and pandemic burnout have made tough jobs even harder. From the classroom to the state patrol, 
If you want to keep good people and jobs critical to the safety and well-being of our children, our communities, and our state as a whole, we must be willing to be competitive with state salaries. That's why That's why my budget recommendations will propose a $2,000 pay raise for all state employees, including state law enforcement, teachers, pre-K teachers, and certified K through 12 personnel. And speaking of our schools, we know we need more teachers. We need to help our kids re recover from learning loss and keep our classrooms safe. In addition to fully funding our schools once again, my budget will include over $150 million in one-time grant opportunities for local school districts to address school security, learning loss, and help some of our more than 9,000 parapros become fully certified teachers. Last year on the campaign trail, no matter where we went, hardworking Georgians told us about the pain they and their families were feeling at the pump, at the grocery store, in everyday life thanks to 40-year high inflation. I know these pains haven't gone away. I know countless moms and dads are still struggling to make ends meet and buy clothes for the next semester of school. And many Georgians are worried about making rent or paying bills. We can't fix every disastrous policy made in Washington, D.C. over the last two years. But because we were in your communities and heard your concerns and your challenges, my budget proposal will fulfill two big promises I made to the people of this great state. First, we will once again return $1 billion of your income tax in the regards of a refund to our taxpayers this year. And second, we will allocate $1.1 billion for a one-time homeowner property tax relief grant to help you with rising local property bills, property tax bills. At a time when hardworking Georgians across our state are feeling the effects of Washington, D.C.'s broken agenda in their wallet, we are putting you and your families first because that's your money, not the government's. The Georgians' first agenda I was reelected to deliver for the people our of our state is about investing and hard-working Georgians in their futures. Because I believe our success over the next 5, 10, 15 years will be thanks to the resolve, the character, the ingenuity of our people, our families, our communities, our businesses, not solely the actions of the government. Our Our job is to make sure our kids get the best education they can. Our streets are safe from crime. Our citizens have access to good paying jobs in a state that welcomes opportunity and investment. And as the top state for business for the ninth straight year, I know we have a lot to celebrate. But as you have heard me say before, we cannot rest on our laurels because there is plenty more work to do. While my promise in 2018 to bring good paying jobs to every corner of our state was not industry specific, I believe Georgia is uniquely positioned to lead the, one, lead the nation in one in particular. Thanks to Governor Deal, I was able to see Georgia's first big project in the electric mobility marketplace with SK Innovation's battery plant and commerce in 2019. 
Since that time, S Cave has more than doubled the size of its plans. Rivian and Hyundai are now building the two largest economic development projects in the state's history at two mega sites in East and Southeast Georgia. And SK Own and Hyundai are partnering for yet another battery plant in Bartow County. But the good news doesn't stop there. For our batteries locating in Coweta County, with a $2.5 billion investment. Archer Aviation plans to hire a thousand Georgians to build electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. And we're announcing suppliers to all of these projects almost on a weekly basis. In all, the electric mobility industry will be responsible for 35 projects across Georgia to the tune of $23 billion of investment in 28,000 new jobs. I believe this is a unique moment of opportunity for our state and for the thousands upon thousands of hardworking Georgians who will benefit from great jobs and incredible innovative companies for generations to come. That's why by the end of my second term as your governor, I intend for Georgia to be recognized as the electric mobility capital of America. <laughs> to accomplish this goal, we are keeping our foot on the gas. And I look forward to the announcements we'll make in the near future. Four years ago, I made this promise to the people of our great state. Whether you voted for me or not, I was going to work hard every day to put you and your families first. And while a lot has changed, and once-in-a-lifetime events have tested all of us, my commitment to the people of this state has not wavered. We may disagree on policy or politics. We may not see eye-to-eye -eye on important issues facing our state. There may be another pandemic, another contentious election, or another national disaster, natural disaster. But my promise to you today remains the same that it was then. If tomorrow morning God sends us another struggle, I will roll up my sleeves and go to work. But also, I have no doubt the people of this state will endure whatever we face, and we will do it together. As, as Marty, Jarrett, and Lucy, and I always remind ourselves. <laughs> Did I leave Amy Porter out that time? Scroll that back. No, I'm just kidding. As Marty, Jarrett, Lucy, and Amy Porter and I always remind ourselves, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened. Do not be afraid because the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. One of the greatest honors of my life has been serving you and my fellow Georgians as your 83rd governor. So I say let's get back to work. Let's keep fighting hard every day to keep our state the best place to live, work, and raise a family. Thank you, God bless you, and God bless the great state of Georgia. Thank you, Governor Kemp. How about another big hand for the greatest governor of the greatest state?
the Honorable Brian Kemp.